Hello there, Michelle G here, Bendy Stitchy. My pronouns are she, her. Today is uh, Saturday, it's August, it's not August. It is not August, I literally just practiced this. It is November, it is the 23rd, and I'm filming a floss tube. I'm a little rusty, last week was Rosie's birthday weekend, so there was no time for floss tube, it was all Rosie all weekend, and it was fantastic, fantastic. We did an escape room, and they, the kids made it out. Wade and I were nothing but a liability <laughs> because it was our first escape room. It was cold. It was dark. There were lights. It was beeping. I was immediately overwhelmed, but the kids got us out safe. So um, today we're here to talk about cross-stitch, and then if you hang on till the end, a little bit about um, tarot, and I am reading a new book because my book expired, so I'll tell you about that at the end. Um but cross stitch, so it has been 14, 13 days, I think, since I filmed a floss tube because I filmed it Sunday last time. I, according to my Notion app, which I'm looking at over here, I stitched nine out of those 13 days for a total of 4,052 stitches, give or take, because I count them by hand. So, like, I'll put in 12 stitches and on my calculator on my phone, I'll hit plus 12. So, um, 4,052 stitches. So, what did I work on? First of all, I have a finish. Um, and I love, if you don't know Pick a Whip from Marjorie Made Stitches, please get to know Pick a Whip from Marjorie Made Stitches. Because I will tell you, it's one of only two sales that I've completely kept up on this year. And it's because of the kind of eph ephemeral nature. Like, it's just so nebulous, right? Like, so every fortnight, Marjorie gives us a um, challenge. And, uh, pick an intimidating project, stitch in your favorite color, a project that has flowers, blah, 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 shmash, shmash. So you can see for the last two fortnight, um, it has been, I have to add an icon. I can't have anything without an icon. Um, a project with a house on it and a project that's close to a finish. So I love, 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 love double dipping, love double dipping. So both my project with a house on it and my project close to a finish ended up being Underwater City from Barbara Anna. So this is it. She's done. This is it. I finished her. Underwater City from Barbara Anna Designs. Let me put something behind it so I can hold it with one hand while I look at Notion to redo the stats. This is four colors of DMC. That's it. Four colors. That's all. It is stitched on um, Fox and Rabbit Oyster Shell. 32 count oyster shell. You can still see my nerd hoop lines. I did not iron this. I will not iron this. Um, I'm okay with not ironing things. And um, I started it on June 25th, 2024. Finished it on November 17th, 2024. Um, put in about 32 hours. <laughs> I put in about 32 hours, 6 minutes, and 24 seconds of my life. Do you ever, for those of you who track time, I know not everybody tracks time, but I love Notion and it lets you track your time and your stitches. For those of you who track time, do you ever look at the time spent on a project and have that reaction? I spent 32 hours of my life on this, y'all. That's, that's almost a full-time work week, 32 hours. I mean, it's part-time, but like we're close to a 30 to a full-time work week. Um, yowza. Okay. But I mean, like, I love it. I'm so happy with it. She's so pretty. I love Barbara Anna designs. Love it. The only change that I made that was intentional. I don't, I don't think I made th that many errors in here. The only change that I made was intentional was I put my, um, date in here, MG24. And that was the last thing that I did. So that was a finish. And then because I finished that, there were some tail ends that needed stitching. So this is my tail end project. This is a summer bower, kind of. This is a summer bower Bendy's version because I messed up. So sorry, Jacob at Modern Folk Embroidery. Um, this is bigger than a summer bower is meant to be because I added, see these leaves here or these flowers, that green and gray flower. There's only supposed to be one of those. So because I added two, it made the whole thing a lot wider. So rather than a bird and one doodad in there, there's four doodads now. And I think looking at it, I need to put a fifth right here. But um, that is a summer bower. It's my tail end project. So as I finish, as I finish stitching, I don't put my tail end of my thread 
if I have like this much or if I have this much or if I have this much, I don't put it back on the thread drop and I don't just throw it away. I use it to stitch on this craziness. So you can see I did the doodads and this bottom piece here. These are all in the blues and whites. And you can see that 939, that darkest blue, I only had enough of that for two stitches. So not very much at all. Um, but I think I need one more doodad up here. And the next project that I'm working on should lend itself pretty well to that. Um, and then I'm planning on going, ha on going ham on some quirky Quakers. So I'll definitely get some good progress. Um, because those will be quick finishes and there's not that many colors to them. So I'll get some really good progress on this over the next, over the next uh, five weeks that's left in this year. So that's my progress on the summer bower. And then the other thing I stitched on was the, don't tell me. It was Stitch for Pride 2024, and I'm just looking up my Stitch for Pride 2024 tracker. So Stitch for Pride 2024, the November learning was about Molly Vaughn. And Molly Vaughn is a trans artist, and she takes people's people who have been unalived and she takes their stories and she turns them into garments. And so part of her art is in the creation of the garment. And the other part is that the garment is worn in a performance or a celebration of the person's life. So it could be anything from like a uh, dance or like a um, interpretive dance to just a dinner celebrating that person. So, um, did all of my learning Molly Vaughn, super interesting, like not me crying at a Ted talk at four 30 in the morning before I go to work. Not me. Yes, it was me. Um, but then this is my stitched piece. So this is on 40 count determination Verdal from Jesse at Miss Laid Pages. This is the official fabric. Unfortunately, I did not get the official floss because Jazz at KN Yarns only could dye so much and that sold out before I could get to it. But this is November and you can see I have like a little bit here and then one column left. This is a pretty light column and then the belt. This is a dress or a garment. It, to me, I'm reading it as a dress. It's a garment. Um, the belt I'm going to do in this color. So each month I pull a color that looks like the color on Dee's design. And um, it's interesting this month because the first one I had was Cottage Garden Threads Hollyhock and it's a much more pink. Um, but then Jean, I think, Pediatric X Stitcher posted hers and it was much more purple. And that's because that's the nature of the beast with hand dyed floss and fabric, right? Dye lots change with the moon cycles and whether the dye lot goblins visited your house last night or whether they're on vacation, like dye lots change. And that's the beauty and the frustration of over dyed stuff. So Jean's purple cayenne yarns color spoke to me a little more than Dee's original pink cayenne yarns color. Cause I have this pink and this one was kind of like it. So this one is actually stitchy box flower silk in the colorway fuchsia, which is right here, fuchsia. And then that will be paired with this gray, which is um, Fiberlicious Yummy Fibers Cotton in shades of gray. So this piece mixes both silk and cotton. And you can't, guess what? You can't tell because like this is cotton, 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 silk, cotton, silk, silk, cotton, 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 silk. Who knew, right? It looks great together. Um, so this is, I'll finish up November today, um, Molly Vaughn, probably because it's a Saturday, right? So this is the whole piece. And then each month I'm working in the color from the previous month. So I've already seen December. I think I actually, we've all seen the colors, right? Dee showed us all the colors, but I was lucky enough to have seen December. So I'm really excited. So I'm going to pull my color for December, um, which I know I have something. And then I'm going to pick something out of this. So let me know in the comments when I pick something out of January to add the December floss, which is like a peachy pink, should I pick out this X here or should I pick out the heart? Because some places are very small like this 
is the only blue that I added into the Kehinde Wiley, Kehinde Wiley, um, for February. But then in other places, right? Like this is a lot. All of this over here is the threadworks that I pulled from that month. So like this pink is not very much. I don't know. Let me know. Would you do the X or would you do the heart? Because I have time to decide. It's not December yet. So, or I could also, if I don't want to pick out, one of my patrons just said, I could fill in this triangle around the X. Maybe I do that. Because <laughs> that's the one solution that requires no frogging. This is why I always ask for help because like, I'm fully capable of making decisions, right? But do I have to? <laughs> do I have to make decisions? I don't know if I have to. Um, but then this will be done at the end of the year. So this is the other Sal that I've kept up with. And these are my colors. I don't exactly know why I've kept all of these colors out for the whole year. Because I've been getting this Sal as a PDF. So I can't pass this on. But um, these, these, this is my colors for the year. So I started with um, Forbidden Fiber Midwinter Night for January. Then I did Forbidden Fiber Aurora Borealis for February. Brennan Needle Sawin for March. Brennan Needle Saturday Night Radio Bingo for April, which I love. Um, this is Stitchy Box Flower Silk in Hera's Peacock. That was May. Almond M&M's Goldenrod was June for Frida Kahlo. This is Cottage Garden Thread's Quinn. For July, which was so much fun to stitch with. I'm actually going to take out because this is August here and I used the July floss. This is the July floss, how it's st stitched up. I used the July floss in that eyeball, but I was lazy and I didn't fussy cut it to get the dark part. So I'm going to pick that out and fussy cut it um, because it doesn't look like as much as, much as a, of a contrast as I would like. But that's Cottage Garden Threads Quinn. This is Stitchy Box Flower Silk Tropical Waters for August and it absolutely pops off that fabric. And then I have Threadworks. I think this is Dark Rustic Cherry. It's 010351. I'm pretty sure it's Dark Rustic Cherry. And then for October, Fiberlicious Yummy Fiber Shades of Grey. Perfect for Edward Gorey. And then November, Flower Silk Fuchsia. And then I'll pick out the December one. So just really loving this. Super excited I've been keeping up with it. Um, so happy. So happy with my results so far. Um, okay. Back to the program. So those are my one finish and my two whips, my works in progress. What about plans? Um, so for plans, I still have a couple things that need shipping and, um, just a couple. There's a cup. My life has been a little bit, my life has been not conducive to shipping things for cross stitch lately. I haven't done anything for the biz in a really long time because my life has been, um, crazy. So I have two more things left to ship, two charity things left to ship. And, um, I'll be doing that. So I'll ship those. And then I'm going to finish stitch for pride November, which should be done today. Let's be honest. And then I have to, I have a model that needs to be stitched for Jesse's burb box. If you don't know, Jessie at Mislaid Pages puts out a burb box every February for February Berry. Um, this is burb box number three, I think. I've been lucky enough to be in all three. Um, so I'll stitch up the model really quick. It's a small-ish. It's my usual, like it's my, um, it's my wheelhouse size. It's like 66 by 66. So I'll pop that out. It's four colors or five colors, I think. Uh, Jesse curated the fabric and the floss for us. And then there's six of us designers, I believe that designed around a theme and every year the burp box gets better. And I'm so stoked for this year's box. So, um, if you didn't get a box, I don't think, whoops, I closed a page. I didn't want to close. Um, I don't think they're available anymore if you didn't get a box, but let's just, let's just take a peek because we might as well shop, right? So this is my friend Jesse, their website, Mislaid Pages, and we need to shop. Um, let's check under the newest editions. Oh. Uh, now I'm distracted. 
<laughs> now I'm distracted. Okay, hold on. I think the bird box is probably sold out. Because there's extras from the 2023 box. Um, Springs promised this was Jesse's first design that they ever designed. Holy cow, did they knock it out of the park. You can get the colors, the fabrics. Um, you can get the flosses. We all designed off of this set of flosses. Pocketbook Peacocks was my contribution for that one. Um, no, so you can't get the box anymore. So sorry to talk about it when you can't have it. Mea culpa. But it's a good box. And then I do have one more round robin that needs my work on it. Um, this is my rogue round robin. This is the only round robin that I still have um, in my possession. So I am the fourth person to stitch on this. So I am bringing this home for Rachel Ray. This is Wildflowers from Ink Circles. And I'm pretty sure, yeah, Rachel sent this to us with all of the called for flosses. And this is beautiful. So I love this is so pretty and delicate and I don't know why, but this just looks like Rachel Ray to me. Like I'm excited to stitch this for her. So these quarters don't really take me very long. And this is stitching, um, with just one strand, which I'm a little bit faster with one strand. So, um, it's 111 by 111. So this will be about like 55 by 56, my portion. And again, that's a couple days stitching for me usually. So today's plan, finish, Stitch for Pride, start the burb box. Hopefully, maybe tomorrow, finish the burb box. Start on this. You, you see where I'm going. And then we've talked about a couple of sales that I have kept up with, and I'm very happy about that. Should we talk about a sale that I have not, <laughs> not kept up with? Quick, uh, Whipco. I have not kept up with Whipco whatsoever. So um, if you're not familiar with Whipco, it's Jessie Marie and she gives us this bingo board and she calls numbers every month, right? And I have something called Quirky Quaker Whipco and I said, I'm just going to stitch Quirky Quakers. I'm going to stitch two a month all year long and I'm going to get a bunch of Quirky Quakers stitched this month. Well, as you can tell by the amount of red on this board and shout out to my friend Nati, Stitchy Nati, this is her Whipco template for... Um, Notion. I do all of my tracking in Notion now, y'all. I'm completely digital. I don't write anything down. I don't track. I used to track in spreadsheets and on Facebook and all the things. And now I'm like, it's this. Everything is in Notion. So what I decided that I would do, um, I decided this morning with my patrons, what I would do is I'm going to try to finish out. I'm going to do a quirky Quaker whip go blitz after I finish my Stitch for Pride, my model, and my round robin. I'm going to do a quirky Quaker whip go blitz and I'm just going to try to finish out all of these. If I finish this board and I know it's a tall order, quirky Quakers usually take me about a solid day of stitching. It's like one weekend day or two weeknight days. Um, so this board probably represents one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 single days or 36 double days. One of those has two quirky Quaker snow folk has two quirky Quakers on it. So 18 to 36 days to finish all of these quirky Quakers. If that's all I work on, right? Um, this was inspired by my friend Jean. And I don't know if you follow her on Instagram, but she's pediatric X stitcher. This is bean, Jean and bean. Jean just and we're going to watch this. We're going to watch this whole reel. Jean just finished 57 quirky Quakers into a journal. Are you ready? I'm playing it. I'll get her permission before I post this. And I can't play the music because I can't get Abba's permission, but just sing a little Mama Mia in your head. Um, 57 quirky Quakers finished into a journal last weekend, five days ago, five days ago, last weekend. Um, really super inspired. I want, I want all of my quirky Quakers stitched and I have a bunch stitched that just aren't in my journals yet, but it's, it's a quirky Quaker blitz. We're doing it. Quirky Quaker whip go blitz. And if I finish the ones on my board, I just keep talking through all of this. If I finish all of the quirky Quakers on my board, I only have five quirky Quakers left to stitch out of Deanna by my count has released 66 Quirky Quakers. If you would like the Quirky Quaker spreadsheet tracker, I am the official owner of that. 
So I'll link it down below, Quirky Quaker Spreadsheet Tracker. Um, and you also could have access to all the list of all, I love her colors on the ornament. You could have access to the list of all of the Quirky Quakers. So it's linked down below, all 66 of them. Some of them are from Patreon. Some of them have been exclusive to boxes. This Happy Holidays was a Patreon. Um, there's one that was just released from Brennan. It's a Brennan Needle exclusive for the people who ordered the Brennan Needle starter boxes. Um, so 57. I love me some Jean. I'll link that video if you need to watch it again and again. I'll link it down below. Um, but Jean really inspired me to do a quirky Quaker whip go blitz and just try to finish them all. So um, that's not too much, right? That's not too much. I feel like I'm a little bit back to my old self. I was going through work was so hard and life was lifing and I just got really stressed and I was going through a bit of a depression. But I feel like um, one thing to know about me is when I'm really, really kicking and firing on all cylinders, I'm planning. <laughs> I am always planning because guess what? I also have um, I'm designing. So I have my plans for uh, the Stitch and Stash Retreat in Edmonton next June. I don't know if the retreat is sold out, but there's I'm, I'm one of the designers at the retreat. And the class I'm teaching, I think they've announced it already, but the class I'm teaching in the class, we're going to make our own little journal. So I'm going to give you all of the supplies and everything is going to be prepped. And you are going to put together your own little journal, your own little cross-stitch journal, um, it'll be a, about about an eight and a half by 11 folded in half. That's how we're going to do it, um, which is the size that I prefer for my journals actually is that um, we're going to we're going to make our own little journal and then we're going to take there's going to be some pre stitching if you choose to do it or you can bring a quirky Quaker or something small. And so we're going to make a journal and then we're going to finish a page in the journal together. And that's going to be the class that I teach. And I'm going to bring everything you need. I'm going to bring your journal making supplies. I'm going to already have, everybody does not get an awl because you need an awl, one of those pokey things, like a stabby pokey thing. And I'm not sure that carrying 40 awls across the border in a plane is recommended. Pretty sure TSA would put me on some kind of list if I tried to do that. Um, so I'm going to pre-poke all of the holes and everything. So you won't have to do that, but you will get a needle to sew your journal together. Cause we're going to sew it. We're going to be fancy. Um, and then I'm going to bring all the ephemera that you need. And then I'll also be releasing a pattern at the retreat that will lend itself to more journal pages. So that's, that's my thing at the retreat. I'm super excited. If you're not registered for the retreat and you think you might be able to go to Edmonton in June, I think they might still be taking registrations. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not the only designer there. There's going to be other great designers there. Um, I know a partial list and I'm wicked excited. So I won't just be teaching at the retreat. I will be attending the retreat. So I'll do my thing, but I'm there to play also. And I'm super excited. I've never been to Ed Edmonton. Um, there it is. Coming to Canada, eh? Okay. So I've also been designing and that's exciting. And then of course the cruise and market, I just sent a model to a model stitcher uh, yeah, the other day. It's in her hands. Mandy, my friend Mandy Parker is stitching one of the models for market. Super excited about that. Um, but yeah, I think I feel my best when I am planning. So excited about plans. Let's talk about what did I buy? I'm still not buying very much stuff. So um, things that I bought that you can't really see that I bought. Um, I did purchase the Zoom the Zoom version of the Acorns and Threads Acorn Gathering. That's in January. I always go to that in person. I've missed two years. Um, one was the year that Wade got diagnosed with cancer. So I was going to chemo and whatnot with him rather than going to cross-stitch retreats, which I think is totally understandable. Incidentally, that was also the year that I was the designer. <laughs> like that sucked, but I wish I could have been there, but more important to be with my husband. Um, and then this year I signed up for the zoom version because I will actually be on my cruise during acorn gathering. The cruise got moved back a week. Um, so I'll be on my cruise that week, but I still wanted to be there. So I'll just be on ship Wi-Fi. Totally fine. Um, and then I also sent Mandy some silks. So that's, um, the model that she's stitching for me is in dinky dye silks and it is on, uh, hand dyed fabrics by Steph and Ada. So the things that I have that I purchased are Patreon purchases. I am in the Dying to Sass Patreon, 
And um, every month, Jenny puts up a poll with three photos, and she says, which one do you want me to take and turn into a floss? And I voted, this one's called Lantern. I think I voted for this one, but honestly, the photos that she put up for, this is no, this is October, the photos that she put up for November, or for October, were all so good that I didn't rightly care which one I got. Um, but this, I'm really glad I got this one. It's beautiful, and I can't wait to use it. Um, I like, I really like Jenny's flosses. Super excited about that. So that's that. I got that. And then, Anna, if you're watching, you gotta look away. Because my other one is Fox and Rabbit, the fabric of the month. This is also a Patreon purchase. I get a fat quarter. And actually, Karen and Bren just send it to me. Let's be honest. I'm not going to lie and say I buy it. They just send it to me. Um, this I get a fat quarter of 36. And this is called Caramel Mud Cake. And I'm obsessed with it. And I need this to be in their regular line. I really do. If it's not already. Caramel Mud Cake. Like, how good is that? How good is that? So I will, I'm also really excited because Wednesday is Whip Wednesday, the last Wednesday of every month. Um, a group of us get together at Acorns and Threads and we just stitch and chat. And so I'll take Anna her half of the fabric on Whip Wednesday. Um, but those are all of my, those are all of my purchases. So really I haven't bought anything other than Patreon goodies. Although I will be making a very calculated purchase from Abby Topknot and that is for the Quirky Quakers that I'm missing. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna buy all the Quirky Quakers that I'm missing all at once from Abby Topknot, save myself on shipping. I do like to buy them directly from Deanna at Darling and Whimsy um, on her Etsy, but Deanna sells PDFs, and I like to be able to pass the stash on the Quirky Quakers. So I get them from Abby. And then another thing that I like to do, um, because I'm not buying things, I also want y'all to encourage, I want to encourage y'all to explore the land of freebies and Noctiflora actually put out a great freebie um, a week ago. Hex the patriarchy. So if you if you're like me and you also think that the patriarchy harms all men, women, non-binary people, everyone in between, um, hex the patriarchy. It's on Noctiflora's um, Instagram. There is probably a link somewhere to how you get the pattern. Probably link in bio. Um, Hex the Patriarchy. It looks like it's stitched in four. It actually looks like it's stitched in, yeah, I think four. Do you think four? I think it's stitched in four colors of purple. And so you could turn, you could turn this blue, pink, turquoise, green, orange, red, anything that has four colors in the color family, turn it. Or, you know, stitch the letters in black and do the goo in a variegated that'd be cool too so there's your check out this freebie hex the patriarchy from noctiflora designs go grab yours um speaking of freebies i have a couple giveaways so this is um from lone elm lane this is the freebie that i've been this is the giveaway chart that i've been trying to give away <laughs> for like a month and a half um but i keep forgetting to post the link to the google form I still haven't posted the link to the Google form. So I'm just going to send this to my friend, um, Nat, because her doggy is called Ivy and this is called Ivy's sampler. I feel like it has to go to Nat. So we're going to try this again. I picked this up at the freebie table. Um, I picked this up off the freebie table at Acorn at Pacific Northwest Stitch Summit. Um, you know, I love Tiny Modernist. I love Tiny Modernist and I love Cheryl. She's so sweet. This is a 2013 Tiny Modernist chart. Her charts don't look like this anymore. Um, this was bought at Stitcher's Paradise in Las Vegas. It was 1050 at the time. It's so old school. I've never even seen this. It's called Trick or Treat Cross Stitch Pattern. Um, it's charted all in DMC. There's five colors. And I did make a Google form this morning and I will post the link down below. I swear I will. Um, and this is the one that I'm sending out. So um, open worldwide. I will put this in an envelope with a stamp on it. So it might take a little while to get to you, especially if you're in Canada, because Canada Post is on strike, eh? I support that. Workers have to be able to strike. They have to. So just know that my Canadian friends, if I send it to you, it's going to take a minute. Um, but that's it. 
wow, did I talk really fast? <laughs> I just didn't, I didn't stitch a whole lot of different things this fortnight. And I feel like sometimes when I don't stitch a whole lot of different things, then, um, I ramble less. I don't know if I ramble less actually. Anyway, speaking of rambling. <laughs> so, okay. I am going to wrap up this floss tube and thank you so much for joining me. I missed you all. I know it's been two weeks, a couple times, and it's been rough. Um, next weekend though is floss tube. So this is floss tube 364. Next weekend is floss tube 365, which means that is one floss tube every day for a year. Like if I made, if I made a floss tube every single day, a feature length floss tube every single day, I have now next week, next floss tube, I will have made enough floss tubes to have made one every single day for one year. I think I've actually been at this for like five or six years, maybe seven. I don't really remember. I, I don't really remember when I started. It's, it's back in the logbook somewhere, but, um, so I'm trying to think of something exciting and fun and, um, memorable to do for next year, for next week, a year of floss tubes. Um, but I don't know. And I thought it would be really fun to go back and like find my first floss tube and <laughs> We could watch it together a little bit and see like, wow, Michelle, you've come a long way. Um, but true story, Wade actually deleted my first 30 something floss tubes <laughs> off of inner, off of, off of, um, YouTube. So you can't find my first 30. And since then we've archived a bunch of them because it just gets to be too much, um, too much to sort through too much space. So, um, maybe I'll go back and find like my 34th or 35th floss tube, at which point I had already been doing it for you know, six months. But, um, yeah, I, I'm thinking about, I might go back and look at like an old floss tube and see like, what was my style back then? What was my philosophy back then? Like, how have I changed? Um, and that would be fun. But if you have other ideas, hit me up in the comments, let me know, like what would be fun for you to see? Um, if I have time, I'll design a freebie, but Lord knows I owe my patrons two freebies already. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, but if you like, thank you for hanging out. If it was your first time, welcome. And if it wasn't your first time, welcome back. Um, if you like streaming, live streaming while you stitch and chat with someone, then I'll be doing that tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Pacific time on Twitch, Sunday morning, um, and on YouTube, I think. I got to test it out because last week it wasn't working and I don't know why. Um, but if you don't like streaming, then I'll see you next week for that big one year of Floss Tubes celebration. Um, so thank you so much for hanging out and happy stitching and I hope all of your plans come to fruition. Bye. Just kidding. Did you think I was going to forget my tarot? I did not forget my tarot. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I pulled my tarot card today from the Tarot of the Mind's Eye by Olivia Rose. This was a gift from my friend Liz, and I had to have this deck because um, my friend Medium uses this deck, and she kept posting these cards, and they're beautiful. So um, 10 out of 10, I would recommend this deck. I love it. It speaks to me. Every deck doesn't speak to everybody, but the art in this one is really great, and this book is impeccable. Every card has its own page with the card on it. So today I drew the three of wands and just like, can you just, can we just appreciate that artwork? I love also my nails on point. Um, I love this artwork. So I'm going to hold it up and I'm going to read to you in the book. The three of wands represents growth, reflection, and looking ahead in life. This card can indicate the hard work that has been put into a situation or into life and reaping its rewards. It also shows planning ahead and being content and happy with decisions that have been made. The wings in this card signify exploring life and spreading your wings. So wicked appropriate card. I have to say the last two cards I drew, which were Friday, no, Thursday and today. I didn't draw a card Friday. I've been hit or miss, right? With depression, sometimes it's hard. Um, this card can indicate the hard work that is put into a situation or into life and reaping its rewards. I have been working so hard at work to advocate for my team for something. And my boss just had a meeting with his boss on Friday. And I called him afterwards to talk about something different. And he said, we have to meet on Monday to discuss the meeting that happened. And I said, 
can you give me a hint? And he said, I think you'll be happy with the solution. So I'm hoping that I'm going to reap the rewards of all the advocacy that I did for my team this past week. Um, it also shows planning ahead and being content and happy with decisions that have been made. So even though I'm hoping that I'm going to be con- happy with the decision and satisfied with the decision that was made, I'm also in a very self-preservation way, putting plans into place that will allow me to deal with the worst case scenario, right? So I'm hopeful. Um, and my boss is great. And I think he probably really went to bat for us. So I'm hopeful that he got the result that we were asking for, but I'm also going to plan ahead and know that if he didn't, then I have a plan and I know what to do. So great card, right? Great card. Great card. Post that up on my Instagram in a little bit. And then I was listening to The Well of Ascension from Brandon Sanderson. It is book two in the Mistborn series. Um, Shout out to my Brando Sando friends because I am a full-on convert, but I do have to say that at 29 hours of audiobook, it expired before I finished it. I'm so sad. It expired before I finished it. It expired at a moment when a siege of a city was looking like it was imminently going to become an attack and most of the characters were trying to figure out how to get two of the main characters out of the city and the freaking book expired. Not that there's any good time for a Brandon Sanderson book to expire, but that was not it. (laughs) That was not it. So I immediately re-requested it. I used the Libby app on my um, phone because I love my library and I'm also very frugal and I don't like to buy a lot of books, especially audiobooks, because I tend not to re-listen to a book more than once. Um, but then when that when that expired, I got upset, as you do, get upset, and I was like, okay, what books are available right now on audiobook that look moderately interesting to me? And Dare to Lead by Brene Brown was available. Now, I know, I think... I don't know exactly, but I think there have been some problematic things brought up with Brene Brown, and I don't know exactly what they are. I think it has to do with the intersectionality of her uh, research, whether or not it has any, actually. Um, But I'm not entirely sure on that. But um, Dare to Lead came across my Libby app, and I just, I was like, okay, universe, I get it. I'm struggling right now in my job, and my job is leadership, so let me just give this a listen. And Brene Brown reads it herself and um, whatever problematic behaviors or or patterns she might have displayed that I might not be aware of, there's just something tickling back here that I feel like maybe, um, but maybe I might be making it up. Um, this book is really resonating right now because there's a lot of things that she talks about that I think I'm doing that maybe I'm not doing or that I know I'm not doing, that I really need to be doing. Like there was one, the section I just got done listening to was about the 16, she she calls it like armored responses to leadership. So like 16 kind of defensive, protective responses to leadership. And then their more vulnerable, more open counterpart. Like these are natural reactions to people in people who are in leadership positions, try not to do that, do this instead. And, and a lot of those really resonated with me. So that was helpful. The unhelpful side of it is I'm listening to it on audiobook and I'm not taking notes. I'm like listening to it while I'm driving and stuff. Um, so I don't know how much of that I'm actually retaining, (laughs) but we'll see. Um, so yeah, that was my book. Um, super bombed (laughs) that the well of ascension expired. Um, I think it expired with like I think I have like six hours left. I was really trying to push it at the end and it expired last Monday morning. I could have finished it if I had shut everything out and listened to it all day on Sunday, but like I was spending time with the fam. So I do, I do enjoy Brandon Sanderson, but I love my family. (laughs) So I'm not going to necessarily trade. I'm not going to shut out Wade and Rosie just so that I can spend time with Brando. Although, you know, um, but yeah, so that's it. Great card today. Um, bummed my book expired, but it's right back on the list. And then I actually just got a notice that another book came up that's available. And I've been putting this one off for a while. Um, Manhunt 
by Gretchen Flecker Martin. I don't know if y'all have heard of this. I think I requested it. Those are obviously nuts. Um, testicles. It's true crime. Oh no, is it true crime? Beth, okay, so this is the synopsis. Beth and Fran spend their days traveling the ravaged New England coast, hunting feral men and harvesting their organs in a gruesome effort to ensure they'll never face the same fate. This is obviously a post-apocalyptic world. Robbie lives by his gun and one hard-learned motto, other people aren't safe. After a brutal accident ent entwines the three of them, this found family of survivors must navigate murderous turfs, a sociopathic billionaire bunker brat, and awkward, rela and awkward relationship dynamics, all while outrunning packs of feral men and their own demons. Um, Post-apocalyptic trans fiction. Don't mind if I do. Borrowed. This one is borrowed until 14th of December. This is how long? This is 10 hours. So I think I can finish Dare to Leave and Manhunt before they expire. Um, wildly different genre <laughs> of books, but we'll see. Um, Manhunt has been popping up and popping up on my... Like, I requested it a long time ago. I'm not sure who recommended it, but one of my friends recommended it, and I requested it a long time ago, and I I was listening to the Brandon Sanderson, so I kept saying, like, later, 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 and finally, it's like, your hold is here. Are you ready or what? And I, finally, I was like, yes, let's do it. So, um, yeah, that's it. That's my books. That's my tarot card. That's my stitching. Thank you all for sticking in. Um that's all I've got. Rosie has a couple of volleyball games today and maybe we might put up some Christmas lights or prep for that. I don't know. Wade's cooking something right now. Breakfasty. I gotta go. <laughs> it smells really good. So uh, thank you all for hanging out. I'll get this edited and get this posted and I'll see you either next week for Floss Tube 365 or tomorrow for streaming. So thank you so much.